Welcome to Wagered on Tilt, everyone. I am T, and today I want to cover logistical regression. Now, I'm not going to get into the complexities of how it works and why it works and what it truly does behind the scenes. What I'm going to try and do is a walkthrough on how to do this in Microsoft Excel. Now, this is a beginning look at logistical regression. Now, if you end up finding that you like using logistical regression, you can kind of go down the rabbit hole and discover more and more and more about it and get a more understanding on how it works, why it works, and things like that. But in this video, we're just gonna be covering how can you set this up in Microsoft Excel? Now, one of the things that I often hear from people is what is logistical regression? How is it different from linear regression? So a logistical regression is going to take in a bunch of variables, uh, you know, a bunch of independent variables, and then try and predict an outcome. Now, that outcome, though, is gonna be binary. It's true, false, win, lose, one, zero, that is it. So in today's video, what we're gonna do is we're going to assume that there's a basketball player and their outcome of points, rebounds, and assists is a predictor as to whether or not the team will win or whether they will lose. So we're gonna walk through setting this up so that you can see how it works, and then you can get a better understanding of how it could fit into a model so that you can try and use this as a predictive tool. So let's go ahead and dive on into the Microsoft Excel sheet. All right, so this is gonna be a walkthrough on logistical regression. So in here, we have a bunch of information and we're gonna kind of rebuild what you see here down below. Now, just so that everybody understands, logistical regression is somewhat similar to linear regression where you're gonna have a bunch of independent variables trying to predict the dependent variable. Now, the difference though is that the linear regression, right, we have a bunch of stats, points, rebounds, assists, those are trying to predict something within a continuous scale, whereas logistical regression is trying to classify something, right? So it's more binary, true, false, one, zero, yes, no, win, loss, things like that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pretend that there's a bunch of stats that we have for basketball points, rebounds, and assists, and we're gonna say one means that the team won the game, and zero means that they lost. That way what we're doing is we're setting up a classification and then we're using our independent variables to try and predict what will happen. Similar to linear regression, we have the intercept plus the coefficients that we're gonna go ahead and use in our formulas. So you will want to go ahead and install Solver uh, for here. So if you were to come into data, if you don't have Solver, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and install that. Make sure you have it, it'll be useful for this. So let's go ahead and copy these headers and move these down. So now for points, we're gonna say Rand between, and I'm gonna say that they went five to 20. And for rebounds, Rand between, and we will say, let's just go with zero to 15. Maybe they're amazing and caught 15 rebounds. Look at that, 14. And Rand between, and we're gonna say, for assists, we're gonna say zero to eight. Now we're gonna also randomize the outcome. Again, one is that they won the game, zero is that they lost. Rand between, and I'm gonna say zero and one. So we're gonna go ahead and then just copy and paste this down. We'll just do that many. So you can see there's a bunch of randomization that's going on in here, um, and that's okay. Now you could use real statistics to figure this out. It just depends upon what kind of classification you wanna do and what stats you think will imply that classification. Now you could run a simulator or a model to get these numbers, to get projections, or what you can do is use historical information that you use in a model, and then you know if this predicts a certain outcome and probability, we would then run another model to get these numbers to do a prediction of a game. And you'll see what I mean here in a moment. So for logistical regression, I am not gonna go through uh, what all this stuff is, the logic, the log, the probability and the log likelihood. Um, I think it can get a little confusing for many people. It confused me a lot when I very first started. So I'm not gonna get into it too much but logit is gonna basically be very similar to what we're doing with a linear regression. We're gonna have our formula here. We're gonna take these and then we're gonna go ahead and pop them into here with the multiplier of the coefficients. So let's go ahead and copy this. Now that we have the manual set up and we've set these values to 0 0.001, 
Uh, if you look, we're going to use a very similar formula to linear regression. We have the intercept plus the coefficient times the value. So we'll say equals, and then we'll choose our intercept, which again, we've set to B001 plus, and then we're going to choose our next coefficient. And then we're going to say this times our value plus C31 times C18 plus C32 times our value, which is going to be D18. And then we can copy and paste that across. And now if I hit F9, it's going to update. Once it has updated for you, you can see that we're going to actually do the exponent here. So we're going to say E log equals EXP, which is going to go ahead and again, return the exponential version of this. So we're going to say this of this equals, okay. And we're going to go ahead and F9 this one again, so we can see the results. Now we got to get into the probability. So here we're going to have a formula. Let's go ahead and copy and paste this down so that we can see what we're doing. So here, what it's basically going to say is if a 10, which is going to switch to a 18 is equal to one. So if they won the game, then you're going to take the E log of F 18 divided by one plus F 18. Otherwise you'll do the inverse where you're going to take that same value, but subtract it from one. And then that will be your value. So let's update this number to 18. Okay. So that's what it's going to look like. And we'll just click enter here and we're going to go ahead and F nine this again. Now, the last thing here we got is the log likelihood. So we're going to say equals LN, which is going to return the log of the number. So we're going to say this, oops, hit the underscore and we're going to go ahead and F nine. And then lastly, we need to sum this. So we're going to say sum and we're going to sum this number. So that gives us minus 6.27339823. So you're going to go ahead and go to data up in your tab, which will bring you over to solver. And when you click solver, this is going to open up. Now here, here set objective to H27 or whatever cell you have it in, which is going to be this one here. So we're going to set objective equal to the sum of the log likelihood. We're going to maximize. Now let me pull this up here. And then as far as the change variable cells, we're going to switch these up and it's going to be these numbers here. So we're basically going to have solvers say, use this as the objective. We're going to maximize it and we're going to use these numbers to try and influence it. If make unconstrained is selected, deselect that and then hit solve. It's going to think for a little bit, as you can see with this cursor. Then it's going to have a little modal open right here that just says, do you want to keep the results? And you're going to say, okay. And after it has run, you're going to go ahead and see this now. So now you can see these values summed to this, and then we updated these values. So let's go ahead and give a quick example of how something like this could work. We have the points, rebounds, and assists. Let's say that you have a predictive model that builds out these values. So what you could say is that if you think that the game outcome is dependent upon a single player's points, rebounds, and assists, or even maybe the team in total, right? You could use something like this. So again, we originally set this up that this is based on an all-star and that if they do a certain number, there's going to be the output of a win. So we could just make up some numbers here and we're just going to say 15 uh, points and they only got three rebounds and they're going to get five assists. So over here, we're going to go ahead and copy and paste this probability down. Let's go ahead and hit F9. So it recalculates. This says that there is a 0.41 probability. Um, so this is below our metric of 0.5. Now, if we wanted to increase it to even say that our metric value that we're going to compare against is 0.6. So it has to have a 60% probability that this is going to happen. So it would say this player is most likely not going to help the team win. Now, if we were to go ahead and change some of these numbers and say they actually went crazy and they scored 35 points in the game and for the rebounds, they had six rebounds 
and for the assists they had let's just say seven assists let's go ahead and recalculate so with some crazy numbers like that based on this model we would be saying that there's a 95 percent chance that team is going to win if we think this player is that much of an all-star and will uh, you know dictate the outcome so that passes obviously our 0.6 value for what we're equating to so again you can have it usually at 0.5 right so if it's above 50 percent then you consider it as accurate so you can do that in here um, and again it depends on how you compare these probabilities against the actual outcomes so that was a logistical regression as you can see there's a bunch of ways that you can kind of pull in different stats to try and predict the outcome as long as the outcome is actually going to be binary you know, again, true, false, win, lose, things like that. So using these kinds of models, you can do a couple of different things. You can either use a separate model that will then feed in projections that you think will happen, such as points, rebounds, assists, things like that, or any other stat that you're using for modeling. Or you can use this to try and predict other outcomes for different models, right? So if you have historical and you have some numbers that you think that are going to happen, right you can put those numbers in it'll give you an outcome then use that outcome to feed a totally different model so there's a lot of different ways that you can tackle this kind of situation and modeling using logistical regression if you have any questions on the formulas that were used in microsoft excel please let me know drop a comment and i will try and help you out the best i can you can also reach me on twitter or x i am wagered on tilt you can also reach me in the unabated discord as the t if you did find this information useful or helpful in any way, please give it a thumbs up. That way it pushes it to the top of the YouTube algorithm and other people trying to figure out how to do modeling can find this video faster. If you like the content that I'm providing or find it useful or beneficial in any way, feel free to subscribe and hit the notification icon. That way, as soon as the next video on modeling and sports betting comes out, you'll be notified. So that is all I have for today. So until next time, happy wagering.